Hi, and welcome to another bite-sized bat rip where we bring you great battle reports without taking up a great deal of your time. Another by fire and sword report, and it's a good one. My Swedish elites are taking on a Muscovite infantry horde, and I'm playing the crossing scenario for the first time. It's another great learning battle with, let's just say, many opportunities for future improvement. Looking at the two forces, you can see that the Muscovites have twice the number of stands over the Swedes, and what's more, they are two force points behind. Mass cheap infantry is one of the typical Muscovite builds. They bring 24 stands of their cheapest infantry, the Border Dragoons, some Serban Cossacks, and field guns. But they only have one weak commander, which makes them very unresponsive. My Swedes are using the same build as previously, with the addition of a second commander. I have learned to really appreciate the power of more than one commander on the field, especially when using a force which must outmaneuver its opponents to win. To balance the scenario, we get Capture the Crossing with one fortification piece. Let's get started. The Swedish force looks like so, with the Archibus armed veterans being my best unit. And the Muscovite force with its ranks upon ranks of untrained infantry, some of which even brandishes scary pointed sticks. This is the river that we'll be fighting over after setting up. There are two crossing points, a ford and a bridge, which are the only ways for troops to get across the river. The bridge is the objective of the scenario and it is this area that we will be fighting for. The two Muscovite cannons really threw me for much of the game because their case shot field of fire commands the entire center of the table. Cannons can really have a great psychological effect on the game, more so than an actual effect. I deployed with the bulk of my forces on the right side, ready to storm the bridge, and the veteran raiders in the center, supported by the commander, ready to respond to whatever the battle brings. Close up on the defenders behind their fortifications. That's a lot of manpower. And here is the other side. Two large blocks of border dragoons holding the crossing. But note that there are no commanders anywhere near them. These poor souls are on their own. And a closer look at my right flank. Masked raiders and dragoons. Yep, I'm planning to charge from turn one. Get in there and get that bridge. Let's get going. Turn one. Muscovites get the initiative and we place our orders. As you can see, both sides decide to be aggressive with the cavalry. And, what is important, know that the infantry at the crossing gets a maneuver order. After deployment, it became clear that the Swedes are concentrating on the bridge, so the Muscovites are pulling their forces away from the crossing towards the center. Trumpets sound and the two cavalry blocks collide. The Muscovite Golova knows that this is the most important engagement, so he joins one of the Cossack units, throwing himself into the thick of things. Swedes get to countercharge and we meet in the middle. On the left flank, my veterans move up, hoping to cause some damage with their arquebuses. To be honest, at this point I wasn't sure what to do with this unit. It was meant as a reserve, so I'm not sure why I felt compelled to push it up. On the right, I push my Dragoons and dismount them so that they can support the cavalry with their musket fire. And in the, in the defensive fire stage, I take a bunch of hits from the cannons and have my own cannon knocked out by the Muscovite firearms. And I wasn't quite close enough to return fire with the Archibuses, so my raiders are just sitting there, taking fire for no good reason at all. I'm still learning how to use the artillery. It is very vulnerable to small arms fire, as one hit is all that it takes to knock it out. When a typical infantry unit is shooting with 4 to 6 dice, even at long range, they have a decent chance of getting that one hit. Artillery really needs to be protected by other units or terrain. But the good news is that I didn't lose a complete Raider base, and I passed the case shot morale test. On the right flank, my Raiders did a much, much better. Starting with the pi firing pistols into the charge and the close combat, I do a ton of wounds to the Cossacks, taking only one hit in, re in return. Which automatically routes the Cossacks, my raiders pursue, but are unable to catch them. Turn 2. 
The bridge is now seriously threatened by the Swedes, and the Muscovy commander has to throw everything he has at the defense to have any hope of winning. Orders come down. I obviously keep charging with my raiders on the right, and I manage to recover some wounds. The Muscovites rally the Cossacks on the other side of the river, but since their commander joined the unit, he can do nothing for the Cossacks stuck on my side of the river. Those are dead men walking. Okay, and before I get into the excitement of the right flank, where we're spilling pewter blood over the bridge, let's look at the left flank. This is my biggest lesson from the game. I have no idea what to do with the veteran raiders. I got scared off by the K-shot firing cannons, so I moved them back. I considered attacking the infantry in the crossing, but it's armed with pole arms, so I just dismissed charging them head-on as foolish. But I forgot to look at the orders. That infantry has a maneuver order, and there is no way for the Golova to change it to defend. They are sitting ducks, in the open, just begging to be charged. I should have moved my raiders around and smashed through that block, getting behind the enemy lines. It would have been game over. But instead, I did this and played them ultra conservatively. On the right, however, I did the right thing, charging my raiders into the broken Cossacks and moving my dragoons up in support. Before the slaughter, Muscovite moves. Note the bridge defending infantry turns to face my raiders, giving themselves a fighting chance. Combat is short and brutal. My raiders cause serious casualties to the Cossacks, pushing them across the river, pursue into the infantry, kill a base, and force them to withdraw. But the Border Dragoons show their mettle and keep good order. That bridge is still disputed. End of the turn. There is still a lot of infantry defending the bridge. You can almost see them, hastily reloading their guns, with a cold river behind them. Every man knows that they either hold or they die. Turn 3. Orders come down. I charge with the raiders on the right, and decide to dance around with the raiders on the left. Muscovite Golova throws everything he has at the bridge and also charges. We move, and the Cossacks make a difficult charge down the bridge. We thought about whether the charge was possible, but with a reduction in frontage to avoid terrain and a wheel, I'm pretty sure that they were able to make contact. Plus, it made the game more, a lot more interesting. On the left, I decided to move sideways, because reason. I was so focused on the bridge and those cannons that my mind went blank and I had no idea what to do with my best unit. So I moved them just to move them. Muscovite remaining moves. And the second phase of the battle for the bridge begins. I take some defensive fire. We exchange a bunch of hits. My raiders are not unable to repeat their dominant performance from the initial charge so I lose a base in exchange for a couple of enemy bases. We tally up the results and we tie, so everyone withdraws. Turn 4. Orders come down, and we both to decide to repeat. Charge! What's the definition of insanity again? Closer look. And this time around, I decide that it is time to throw my commander into the fray as well. I'm going all in for combat. Another bloody turn. First, on the left, I finally decide that it's time to do something with my veterans, so, so I move them up into the Archibus range of the cannons, we exchange fire, and I knock out one of the cannons without taking any hits. On the right flank, we bo both cause terrible damage. I really hope this bridge is worth it. My Dragoons support with defensive salvo into the flank of the Cossacks. The Raiders take and cause a lot of hits. And after the dust settles, this combat is a draw. We both with the draw to lick our wounds and consider the options. End of turn four. If you could only see the casualties littering that open field in front of the bridge. Turn five. In the grim darkness of the 17th century, there is only war. The orders come down and we are both committed to taking that bridge at any cost. We move. And we fight. But this time, my Raider's superior training and the flank fire from the Dragoons finally wins out. I win the combat outright and the Muscovites flee. I pursue the border Dragoons, chasing them into the river, wiping out the unit. Their companions can only watch from across the river 
as that entire formation is cut down or drowns. The bridge is mine. End of the turn. Turn 6. Cossacks mount one more desperate attempt to retake the bridge, but with the Swedes entrenched and defending, they don't stand a chance. The Cossacks suffer from my dragoons taking fire in the flank. The bridge is like a shooting gallery. On the left, the veteran raiders caracol and knock out the second cannon. On the bridge, the Cossacks take two more hits from my raiders and are wiped out. The Golova survives and withdraws. One final look at the bridge, fully controlled by the Swedish forces. And a final bird's eye view of the entire battlefield. Okay, the dice have fallen silent, so how did this game tally up? It was rather bloody on both sides, but more so for the Muscovites. First, the bridge belongs to the Swedes for 6 points. Then both of us suffered heavy losses, with Swedes just going to heavy and Muscovites just staying within heavy, for a total of 6-0, which is a Swedish, Swedish victory. I really hope they make good use of that bridge. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the bat rip, please subscribe. If you have any questions, observations, or suggestions, please comment below. I'd love to hear from you. See you next time on Bite Sized Bat Reps.